we are fixed on CMM. So to begin, most of you probably don't know what CMM is. It's a coordinate measuring machine similar to this here. It has an arm that can move in X, Y, and Z direction with a probe attached to the end that's able to make contact with an object that you want to measure, and it records all that data and can actually ensure that your object is manufactured to certain specifications. So for this project, we wanted to design a 3D printing retrofit package that could be mounted to this end or this probe head, and we could actually use this machine as a 3D printer because it already has many similarities. So for the project, we had to create a user interface, a code translator, and a 3D printer assembly that can mount easily to the, the uh, CMM. So overall, the whole idea here was to explore the potential capabilities of using a uh, CMM as the basis of a 3D printing uh, mechanism. So the project motivation here is, as you can imagine, there are many complex objects that you want to measure and you have to have a way to securely mount these objects because if you're measuring and it moves, your measurements are wrong. So you have to just uh, fabricate fixtures that often have to be engineered, designed, manufactured. This is a time consuming um, phase of this uh, quality control system. So if you could use the same mechanism that you're printing on or you're measuring on as a printer, you can print these objects and you can remove a lot of the time consuming um, engineering aspect of all of this. You can also use the CMM during its natural downtime when there's not an operator because you can set it to print and just let it go overnight. So on top of that, you're adding value, you're adding functionality, and as I said previously stated, you're providing a simple means for creating these fixtures instead of fabricating them out of metal. You can use simple plastics or any kind of other filament that's on the market. So the best outcome of this project, we needed to design a 3D printer retrofit package that comprised of user hardware, or hardware components and a user interface. As you can see here, this is the best outcome diagram with a 3D printer head mounted to the, the probe arm. A filament spool will be mounted to the gantry and there will be a PCB bed, which is a heat bed that prevents the printed object from sliding around uh, that is uh, rested on the granite base of the CMM. So all of this needs to be able to be attached without any kind of permanent fixture with no um, damage being caused to the CMM due to the cost of the machine. The next thing we had to do was assemble the retrofit package, test the printer, and then print a usable object. So for the software, key accomplishments that we created or that we had was the user interface. As you can see here, it's a fairly simple interface, but this is just a prototype and a proof of concept. So we had to provide connection settings to connect to the CMM. We needed a TCP IP communication for that. We needed manual control of the CMM to initialize, zero the, uh, the machine, get the position of the machine, set the offsets required so that we print what we want to print, and clear those offsets so the machine can go back to normal operation. On top of that, we have manual jocks here. We have a manual command that can be entered. We have allowed for print speed change and for um, file inputs so users can input their own 3D printed object. And the translator that I'll talk about next will break down that object and send it over into the CMM's native commands to move the machine. So for the G-code translation, the user will put a G-code file using that browse button. It'll go through the translator and will be split into an extrusion file and a movement file. The movement file will be passed through TCP IP, as I previously mentioned, to the CMM that will control the movement of the machine. The extrusion file will be passed over a USB serial connection to the printhead controller, which in this case we use an Arduino, and that will control the on-off of the stepper motor, which controls the filament extrusion. I'm gonna hand this over to Tian now to talk about the hardware. Okay, hi everyone, talk. For the hardware part, we we'll actually have three parts, the heat bed, the crank head, and also the circuit. For the heat bed, here is the red plate, it's a PCB bed, which provides heat and the reset temperature. And on top is a piece of glass, which will balance the heat. Also, we will use a heat insulated paper underneath it, so to prevent the heat going to the CMM base. So here is a picture of the schematic of the press head, and here is a real product we built up. How it works is basically here the red line is a heater. It will insert into the heat block and raise temperature of the heat block. At the same time, the thermometer will measure temperature of the heat block. It will sense that data to the Arduino 
and Arena will control the power of the heater. When it reaches certain temperature, it will turn off the power. So the heat block will stay at that temperature. When temperature is reached, the filament will come from top, go through gear in the middle, and get melted in the heat block, finally get extruded out from the nozzle. The metal line here, also including with the fan, it displays the heat. So the, uh, the heat will not damage the motor. The circuit here is pretty simple. We use the Arena Uno, and the red chip is the motor driver. The two things here is a relay, which works as a switch. Here is the circuit diagram. It represents the circuit I showed before. We have the blue relay which, con which control the temperature of the front head. We have the high current relay which control the PCB temperature. And also the motor driver will transform the uh, DC power to the constant current feed into that motor drive, that motor. So here is the video for our final outcome. As you can see, it's printing a spiral with the CMM machine. So for the outcome, we can, like Michael talked before, we can translate the G-code to the CMM moving and also to the uh, extruding of the print head at the same time. Also on, in this graph, we can see the print head can be easily take off or put on like a regular CMM pro head. So I will head back to Michael to talk about. So for this entire project, um, we had learned quite a few lessons. The first overall is the design will change. We started this project with what we thought was a clear, easy path to our end goal. Um, we changed numerous times, and even in the end, we found some things that if this project moves forward, other people will have to take over and modify slightly. Uh, the next thing we found was safety in all of this. Um, as most people know, if you use the 3D printer, there are fumes and things like that that you have to be aware of. So you have to make sure you use this in an open air environment. Um, also, you have to make sure everything is wired properly. We actually had an issue with one of our drivers that it actually shorted out or something, but it failed completely. We had to order a replacement on short notice. Um, and this process started with uh, drawing an idea from Jonathan O'Hare. Um, so we had to do all this from scratch. So scratch engineering was a great um, workup of everything that we learned through the process of going to school here. And documentation is key for this project because we plan on handing this over back to Hexagon to continue this design. We provided the proof of concept and now they know why we made the decisions we made and where to go from there. So finally, I'd like to thank our technical director, Jonathan O'Hare. Without his guidance on this project, we wouldn't know what we were trying to achieve because you know, there are 3D printers out there, but we're trying to do something completely different. And finally, I would like to thank Capstone Director Professor Sunak. Without his guidance on this entire project and maintaining the passion throughout the semester, we probably wouldn't have got to this end that we had. So thank you.